Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome to the lecture number 60. So, we have been discussing about the control movement gyros. So, I have made a, this figure for the control movement gyro in advance. So, what we can see here that uh, the satellite is enclosing this control movement gyros and we are assuming that the center of mass of the satellite main body and center of mass of the control movement gyro both are coinciding. So, center of mass of the satellite and CMG are coinciding satellite main body. Satellite main body and CMG are coinciding and therefore, the equation then becomes very easy to work with because if you remember that whenever we are differentiating this. So, we have got the term like uh, if we have written m the equation for the external moment. So, that has appeared at d h by d t with respect to the E frame and plus V cross P. Okay. So, V 0 plus V 0 cross P, okay. where P is the total linear momentum of the whole body. So, unnecessarily this term we do not have to carry if we assume this. Okay. So, this will simplify little bit our the whole process of uh, working with this and it is always possible that you fix your uh, the other components such that the center of mass and the satellite the rest of the satellite center of mass both of them coincide. So, this we are terming as B and uh, this is your CMG. So, here in this figure C 1, C 2, C 3 as it is written here, this is attached to the satellite body, but not rotating with respect to the satellite. Okay. So, it is a fixed in the satellite and there is also the body axis which I have not shown here and say that body axis if I try to show here. So, that I can point out here along this direction. Let us say that this is these are the three directions in which your this is your uh, E 1 direction body, E 2 direction of body and E 3 direction of body, a small E 1, E 2, E 3, capital E always we have used for the inertial frame. Okay. So, in this body then your uh, C 1, C 2 and C 3 they are fixed. So, here is your C 1, this is C 2 and C 3, these are the fixed direction, they are not going to change. Thereafter we have chosen a frame which is attached to the frame external frame D, okay, which I have shown as D 1, okay, D 2 which is going here D 1, D 2 and D 3. This is rotating along with the frame D, but there is one point to note D 3 and C 3 they are always along the same direction. Okay. So, this D 3 and C 3 which is written here shown here. Okay, so, they are always along the same direction because this frame the frame shown by blue which is the D frame it is a rotating about this axis, okay, it is a rotating like this. So, this is rotating in anti clockwise direction, anti clockwise. So, these two are not going to uh, they are always in the same direction. So, this way we have defined D 1, D 2, D 3 
So, your d 1 and d 2 will change their direction as the angle psi changes. If this frame it rotates and comes to this place new place which I have shown you earlier also this is the old place and this rotates by here this psi angle. So, this you are showing as psi dot. Okay. So, if it comes to this place you will see that this will change its position and this will also change its position with respect to the satellite body. Okay. Thereafter, we have fixed one frame to the inner ring, this is your inner ring. So, to this the frame we have fixed such that your along this direction you have f 1, f 1 is coming here, this is your f 1. Okay. So, from this place f 1 is being shown, from this place then outward this is your f 2 which is shown here. So, f 2 is here f 2 cap and similarly in the upward direction then is the your f 3 is shown. Okay. So, this frame is rotating along with the pink frame which is here f frame. Okay. Now, we can start uh, so all the things I have written here f 1 f 2 is attached to the frame f d 1 d 3 is attached to frame d. Okay, and C 1, C 2, C 3 it is attached to the satellite body and it is a non rotating frame. It will rotate only along with the satellite, but not with respect to the satellite this frame. Okay. Okay, so, next we can start composing our problem. So, we will write as omega angular velocity of the main body which is your b this part okay. angular velocity of the moment body with respect to the inertial frame and this we will write as simply as omega. Then angular velocity of the d frame with respect to the with respect to the b frame Okay, because your this is the frame here and this frame is rotating by here psi dot. So, only and this direction is C 3 cap. So, only this part will appear here. Okay. So, d with respect to b frame. Okay. Thereafter, the angular velocity of the f frame with respect to the d frame that will be theta dot times d 2 cap which I have shown here. Okay. Theta dot here is in this direction, this vector goes here in this direction multiplied by the corresponding unit vector. So, I am not using this notation E d cap and something like that because again we have to carry so many subscripts and other things. So, this is easier to comprehend here in this place and thereafter the lastly we have the angular velocity of the wheel with respect to the which frame this is rotating with respect to the f frame. Okay. This is attached to the f frame, axle of the wheel it is attached to the f frame. Okay. Therefore, this we can write as capital omega. So, capital omega we have written for phi dot which is the spin rate of the wheel. So, capital omega times f 1 cap. Now, f 1 cap will change direction, d 2 cap will change direction with respect to the satellite all of them are changing. Okay. So, with respect to the satellite f 1 will change and also this changes with respect to the d frame and so on. So, this procedure we have to carry out. Okay. Now, here the total angular momentum it can be written as the summation of the main body frame and the main body and then the outer frame which we have noted as d and then the uh, outer frame we have written as d and then the f frame okay, and then the angular momentum of the wheel. Okay. So, this approach that we are taking here this is showing you these are the absolute angular momentum okay, not a relative one just as in the previous lecture we have done that and then we have combined to get a 
a derivation which was in the sense relative sense with respect to the satellite. Here all these are the absolute angular momentum. Okay, so, we are making free body diagram of each and every one this is your satellite, this is your outer frame, then this is your inner frame and to this attached is the wheel. Okay. So, all of them are the free body diagram F B D. So, for all of them we are writing here like this. Now, we have to compose each of the term here. So, the first term H B this will be equal to moment of inertia of the B frame. B frame means it is uh, the main satellite body okay, which excludes the C M G. Okay. So, I B times omega b slash e this is the angular momentum of this and this we are writing as i b times for convenience this we will just write as i b times omega. Thereafter we need to also, so your h dot then will be written as h dot equal to h b dot plus h d dot and all of them with respect to e frame. Okay. H dot okay, so P, you can see that we have written all of them with respect to means we are considering the free body diagram. So, therefore, h dot b slash e this quantity will be written as i b times omega. So, there is a frame fixed into this which we are writing as the e 1, e 2 and e 3. This is your body frame attached to the main body this b. Okay. So, in this body frame the moment of inertia of this main body is not going to change and therefore, we can write it like this times omega cross i v times omega. I am not putting here dot just to unnecessarily this I am considering that this part will give you a vector and this is multiplied by a vector. So, it is a very simple okay. unnecessarily completing uh, complicating in terms of the dyadic uh, it will not benefit here in this place. So, it is a follow up uh, this omega cross here omega cross what we have written omega cross this is simply implies this is nothing but omega tilde cross okay, which is a matrix. And this uh, omega here this omega this implies that this is nothing but identical to omega tilde equivalent to omega tilde. Okay. So, this way your equation then gets simplified. So, this is your equation number let us say a. Okay. Now, we take the next one which is H d. H d now this is your d frame. So, d frame to this we have attached one frame which is d 1, d 2 and d 3 and this frame will be rotating with respect to the satellite. So, in the d frame the moment of inertia because it is a fixed to the outer frame and it is a rotating along with the outer frame. Okay. Therefore, moment of inertia of this frame in d 1, d 2, d 3 it is not going to change and it makes us easier to write. So, I can write it like i d times omega d cross e. Here see the difference this is d cross b a d this is b this is with respect to b. Okay. Here I am writing omega d slash e means that this angular velocity of the frame d with respect to frame e which is an inertial frame. Okay. So, this can be written as i d then the angular velocity of the main body and this is because it is embedded in this main body. So, we can write this as 
psi dot. So, if, uh, or we can write as omega times omega d with respect to the b frame. Okay. So, th this will be equal to this, this summation is equal to this part. which will write as omega times psi dot c 3 cap, because psi dot is lying along the c 3 cap direction. C 3 cap and d 3 cap, they are along the same direction all the time, c 3 cap and d 3 cap and therefore, d 3 cap can be replaced by this and it makes easier some of the steps can be skipped. Now, we can write here h dot. So, h d dot then it becomes d h d by d t with respect to E frame. Okay and this we can then expand as d h d by d t with respect to the d frame and plus omega d d slash c cross remember the past derivation we have done omega this is i d times omega d slash e. This is nothing but your the h d term. Okay. So, this term is your h d. So, this is the way we have written it. You have to particularly take care of the terms while I am writing here this is omega d slash e. Okay. If we look here in this place this was omega. So, this is the difference here which we have to take care of, because with this, this is now frame you are considering this frame here, this particular frame okay. and this is you are considering with respect to the E frame, each of them you have made as a free body diagram and then you are considering. So, in that case this is the way you will write. Okay. Now, h d is given to be this quantity. Okay. So, we can expand it in the next step. So, we have h dot d d h t by d t. So, this is the quantity h d we have to insert there. with respect to the d frame and uh, this is omega plus psi dot times c 3 cap and then uh, i d is also there. So, i d we have to put the, the i d is there. and this plus omega d i d times omega d slash e. Okay, now, this part will expand. So, in the d frame i d does not change. So, i d will simply come out omega gets differentiated okay. and this is with respect to. So, your d omega by d t while you are writing here this subscript d, but this is identically equal to 
this is what we have done earlier also this is with respect to basically e frame okay while we differentiate the angular velocity so this goes with the e frame so this way if we write it here in this place so id times omega dot and then plus psi double dot okay then c3 cap and then psi dot and this c3 what this c3 how it is going to change d by dt okay. with respect to the d frame and here is your c3 cap so c3 cap is a vector which is fixed in the body okay this is your c3 cap vector and this body itself this is rotating at the rate omega okay therefore we will write here this is omega times c3 cap so this is the expansion of this term okay. and rest we can copy like this so this is your equation number b okay and uh, id is common to all of them so id we can keep it outside here okay in the next step then we have to take the f frame so h dot f and this we have to do with respect to h dot f with respect to the e frame ok so h f now we have to pick up h f is your this frame the horizontal one which is the inner frame this is the f frame so this will be if times the corresponding moment of inertia so omega f with respect to e moment of uh, moment of inertia if and then omega f slash e means the velocity angular velo absolute angular velocity of the frame f with uh, okay which we are writing with respect to frame e now this f i f we are writing this is defined in the f frame itself ok. So, f frame uh, we have shown previously this is your f frame. So, along the f 1, f 2 and f 3 vector it will it is defined ok. So, as this f frame rotates so f 1, f 2, f 3 will rotate and therefore, in the f frame the corresponding moment of inertia i f does not change ok. So, this you have to do with respect to E frame and then we write this as I f times d by d t ok with respect to the f frame omega f slash e okay. and plus omega f slash e cross ok this term we need to expand this is as usual ok so this become i f times now d by d t and remember while uh, I am writing here i d. So, this is defined in the d frame itself this is defined in the f frame itself here this is defined in the f frame itself putting so many subscript it makes the things complicated okay. ok. 
understanding the control moment gyros complete function it is not impossible or very difficult, but we have to take care of all the subscript and other things. Okay, and rest we have to write for omega f e. So, omega f e will be consisting of omega first omega is the angular velocity of the main body, then the d frame is rotating with respect to the main body. So, therefore, for this we have to keep it here okay. and thereafter your f frame is rotating uh, with respect to the d frame. Okay. So, that is given by theta dot theta dot times and in the corresponding d frame the corresponding unit vector this is theta dot times d 2 cap. Okay. So, theta dot times d 2 cap. Okay, so, what this this quantity is this is your omega uh, psi dot uh, psi dot e we have written as d cross b omega d d slash b and then thereafter f with respect to d. So, this is omega d slash b, this is omega d slash b and this part is omega uh, this for the d frame with respect to the b frame or with respect uh, uh, this is ok, this is with respect to the b frame and the lastly we have used the notation theta dot d here this is f frame with respect to the d frame. So, this is the omega f frame with respect to the d frame. So, these three are added to get this omega f slash e. Now, we expand this this quantity will be simply omega dot this quantity will be psi double dot and then c 3 as earlier how this is changing that we have to write here. Okay. So, that becomes psi double dot c 3 cap and plus this will change because of the rotation of the d frame. Uh, sorry, this is fixed in the C 3 frame. Uh, sorry, uh, what I am stating that uh, this is your D frame and this is along the C 3 cap direction, psi dot is along the C 3 cap direction. So, this is because of the rotation of the main body, your this quantity C 3 cap will change as we have done earlier. So, therefore, we write here psi dot times omega cross C 3 cap. And uh, then we go to the next term. So, this is theta double dot d 2 cap and how the theta dot is going to this d 2 vector is going to change. So, theta dot cross theta dot times now this theta 2 theta 2 dot times d 2 cap. This is a vector which is d 2 cap is a vector which is fixed in the this pink frame so, fixed in the blue frame and it is a pointing here in this direction. So, uh, the question is how we are going to change this part. So, 
so omega times c 3 cap and then theta double dot is coming here h f we are taking here. Okay. Next part we have to write here the proper cross d 2 cap and then this bracket will be closed and thereafter this part omega epsilon c cross i this f f omega epsilon c. So, this part we are keeping as it is and the other part we are expanding. So, the question is how your d 2 vector is changing. So, t d 2 vector will change and already the psi vector we have taken care of psi vector is changing because of the omega only okay. and d 2 will vector will change because of omega and plus psi okay. because d 2 is d 2 is here in this place. So, this body is rotating at omega and also together with this, this frame is rotating at the psi dot to which your d 2 vector is attached okay, d to the d frame and d frame is rotating at psi dot. So, we have to take care of these two factors. So, this is omega plus psi dot times c 3 cap. This is the angular velocity of the frame the outer frame. Okay. So, the outer frame angular velocity. So, th this part is nothing but your here. So, this part is ending this part is nothing but your omega frame d with respect to frame e. here this is not a cross product here just we have written it like this this is theta dot times omega. So, if, uh, omega is the main body angular rate and d frame is rotating. So, that we are adding. So, d slash e this becomes. So, omega dot d slash e perhaps we have used for some other notation no, d d slash b we have written here what d slash e we have written. Okay, so, if you add this two, so your uh, omega b slash e plus omega d slash b okay, that gives you the total omega d with respect to the e frame, omega of d with respect to the e frame. So, this part I am not writing here, this is obvious. Okay, and we can expand it and write it. So, this constitutes your the angular uh, the equation for the f 1 so the frame f and thereafter we have to write the equation for the wheel. So, you can see that how much complication is arising. If you take the exact equation for the C m g control moment gyros and that too we are assuming that the center of mass of the control moment gyros and rest of the satellite it is a coinciding. If you do not assume that then the system will be equation will be further complicated. Okay, so, we can wind up here we can write as h f h f slash e h dot f slash e this we have written as the 
which dot is this part and then the other part. So, I f psi double dot C 3 cap just rearranging the terms theta dot times d 2 cap this is this part. So, this part lastly I am writing omega cross this is omega cross psi dot prime C 3 cap and plus I f f and times this cross So, this is your equation number C. This we could have this term we could have written before this, it is ok, that is fine, it does not matter. Similarly, we write for Similarly, for the will equation can be written. Okay. So, in that case h will we are writing and that we are writing in the will frame itself. Okay. So, will is attached to the frame f which is a rotating frame. Okay. omega will of with respect to E. This is the basic equation. And omega will we can write as angular velocity of the will with respect to the f frame plus angular velocity of the f frame with respect to the d frame and then angular velocity of the d frame with respect to the b frame we are not writing with respect to the c frame because c and c is also fixed in the body and b is also fixed in the body. So, it is just a matter of orientation, okay. it is not rotating. And this can be expanded as I w omega t uh, omega d slash b and one more term is there omega b slash e. So, this is the rotation rate of the angular velocity of the body with respect to the E frame, then with respect to the V frame the outer frame angular velocity, with respect to the outer frame inner frame angular velocity and with respect to the inner frame will angular velocity. So, these are the four terms which are appearing here in this place. So, we can write this, this part is simply your omega dot as per our earlier notation omega d slash b, uh, this we have written as omega d slash b psi dot c 3 cap. So, this is psi dot c 3 cap 
and omega f slash d this is theta dot times d 2 cap and this capital omega this is nothing but capital omega is along the one direction of the frame f. So, this is capital omega times f 1 cap. Okay. Now, we need to differentiate this part again this is not omega dot this is just omega dot will come in the next step and here this uh, capital omega which we have replaced phi dot by capital omega you can keep phi dot as well it does not matter. Okay. So, the next step involves getting the dot of this means we have to differentiate this d h by d t write it in this format with respect to the e frame with respect to the inertial frame how it is changing. So, that we can do it on the uh, next page. So, I will write here h will this is the absolute angular velocity of the will equal to i w okay. and i will this is defined in the f frame. So, instead of writing i w like this I can this is equivalent to writing i w in the f because in the f frame the direction of the axial of the wheel it is not changing okay, or neither the moment of inertia of the wheel in changing in the f frame okay, which is the inner frame in the inner inner frame is like this okay, it is a coming like this. Okay. So, along this direction we have kept as f 1 here as f 2 cap and f 3 cap is going vertically out okay, out of the wheel. So, this is the rim of the wheel. So, therefore, in this d frame sorry the f frame which is the uh, inner frame the wheel moment of inertia will not be changing. So, we will describe this i w you can write as i w w or either you can write with respect to f. So, both are same. So, we will put a tag later on let us start with and then we have uh, the other terms we will just reverse all the terms from we will start with omega. So, this is omega and plus psi dot times c 3 cap and then theta dot times d 2 cap we have got and capital omega times f 1 cap we have got and we need to differentiate this in order to get the d h by d t of the wheel with respect to E frame. So, this we will do with respect to first the f frame in which the wheel moment of inertia it is not changing and thereafter we can go up. Okay. So, here in this case I am discussing a case where your wheel speed okay, this is the angular velocity of the wheel this is also changing and this particular part, part is called variable speed control moment gyros this is variable speed c m g ok means you are changing also this and this provides 3 degree of control ok earlier with the if your this will you if you, you cannot speed up this will say if omega dot is not present omega dot is 0. So, only 2 controls 2 axis control you are getting one along the this axis which is the outer frame and another you can get along this axis. Okay. If you restrain along this axis you get output here depending if you are torquing along this you will get output along this axis if you torque along this you will get output along this axis. So, you just have to look into where the resultant control moment will be. Okay. So, under this assumption now we can if we differentiate this. So, we can write here i w i outside and then with respect to the f frame and this is omega plus psi dot c 3 cap theta dot d 2 cap and capital omega times f 1 cap and plus. So, this quantity is your omega will 
with respect to the E frame. So, here this will come as omega will with respect to E frame and cross I will times omega will this term we need to expand here. Okay, thank you for listening. We will continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.